I get East Cleveland at its best. Together we are East Cleveland. We can do more. What is my Cleveland at its best? I get to class all excited. I get East Cleveland at its best. I am the definition of I ain't got no pencil. From that one meeting you saw, we're starting to blow open the things we've done before, and what else can we do? That's my question. Yes, we can do that, but we are so robust and complicated enough, we can do more. What some people started to think as we talked mindfulness was, oh, that's just breathing techniques and yoga. You just want the kids to be flexible and have good wind. But no, it's about what Tom did over the last two days, he just told you stuff that happened this morning. He, he gave you examples from his personal life of how he has to be mindful and calm down and refocus. What if we did that to teachers and told them how we process? Because sometimes we deal with things too, right? And then if teachers did that to children, now we're teaching mindfulness without it having to be a curriculum. Why can't it just be a way we talk to each other and we take time to process what's going on in life? Try again. Good morning. Good morning. I was hoping for like the one kid that just would like scream. Yes. <laughs> so I want to talk to you very briefly about some supports that are built into today for you. I don't know each of you as a learner, but I'm hoping to learn a little bit more about you. So yesterday, I did some observations. I looked to see who got bored quickly, who got off task quickly, um, who needed a little more movement. I looked to see, what do you do when you struggle? Do you ask someone? And then I'm hoping you sit next to people who are willing to be your community. So we want you to think for a moment, what is the condition of a teacher's nervous system when in the classroom? And then think again on what is the condition of a student's nervous system in the classroom? Are they present? Are they attuned? Are they empathetic? Or the opposite is, are they burnt out? Are they fatigued? Are they anxious or in some kind of stress response? That's the question that's going to ground all of why we're doing this today. So we want you to kind of think about that. What's the condition of your nervous system? Often we're so busy that we don't even check in to see how we really feel. What is mindfulness? And we'll talk about what it is and what it is not. So mindfulness is paying attention on purpose and without judgment. So going through on the board there, sunny, partly cloudy, chance of rain, thunderstorms, severe weather, you can put it wherever you want because it's not a judgment. This just lets us know how we can respond to you, how we can work with you, how we can support you and be a community. We're not saying, hey, you've been on severe weather for three days. I mean, what's the problem? It's time to get it together. That's judgment. Right. And how often are we able to express our feelings without judgment? If we don't create those environments, it's possible that a child could go through their entire academic career and not experience that kind of safety to say, I don't feel good today, and it's not physical, I just don't feel like it. Safety, non-judgmental, attentive. Can I ask what happened yesterday afternoon after school? Did you get a minute to breathe and relax and rest after summer school was over? Did you get a chance to do that? No. Okay, so today, is grandma gonna pick you up? We're coming to get you. I'll talk to him, and I'll see if you can get a breather in between, okay? Because the day is, it's not. So that's what I do for my son. I give my son a minute to breathe. He gets to go somewhere in the house without me and his father. And he gets to just go, Rusa. And then he comes back with us. And that helps his day go. It's not just a little bit better, okay? So I'll see if he'll give you a chance to breathe. Breathe in. Breathe out. Take another moment, breathe in, breathe out. When you're doing this breathing, people around you don't even have to know that you're bringing your focus back. And let me add to it, I don't know how many of you have that, um, what is it, the Apple Watch? But certain times in the day, it'll tell you when to breathe. And they'll do the rings that circle around. And so, if you don't use that feature on your watch, try it. And for you Android people. <laughs> 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 
to watch. Children and adults have trauma inside, and that leads to anger, and I don't know what will set you off. So I need to build out a curriculum that teaches you how to self-regulate, and if I started at kindergarten, then we will have less of these disciplinary issues, and students will be able to focus on the content. The difference between stress and trauma is being able to cope, and how you are able to cope with the different stresses that you have. So when we talk about the definition of trauma, we think of the three E's, an event, an experience, and the effects of whatever that event or experience is. There's different types of trauma. There's um, medical trauma. So you have a lot of students that, that deal with different illnesses and ailments who may be in constant pain. That's traumatic for them. So then you have um, students, we think about poverty, you know, um, like the skit I did at, at the beginning. I ain't got no pencil. I woke myself up this morning. Cause we ain't got no alarm clock. I dug through the dirty clothes basket. Cause ain't nobody washing my uniform. I brushed my hair and my teeth in the dark. Cause we still ain't got no lights. I got my little sister ready. Cause my mama ain't come home again. But you know what? I got us to school on time. So we can have us a good breakfast. Because we ain't got no food at home. Then, when I get to class all excited, my teacher fussed at me. Because I ain't got no pencil. Those mindfulness techniques that we learned today, I use them. Now, I want to share with you. As we go down this road, and we're about to embark on this journey, you may not be comfortable because the conversation about trauma might re-traumatize you for something that you've experienced. You don't have to talk about it, but know it and understand what purpose it serves. Because trauma, it serves a purpose. The thing is that trauma continues beyond its purpose. All right. Thank you very much. Are you ready to get started? I get me Cleveland at its best. I am the definition of success. I am me Cleveland at its best.